Here's a profile of the avocado variety called Nebal. Uh, this is a, a very old variety. It's got a lot of historical significance, even though it's not grown commercially anymore these days. The Nebal was found by uh, Wilson Popino, who worked as a, an agricultural explorer back in um, the early 20th century. He was down in Guatemala working for the USDA and he found the um, mother Nabal tree in 1916, and in 1917 he cut budwood of it, sent it up to the U.S., and uh, it's been grown in especially California ever since. Um, he found it in Antigua, Guatemala, and it was commercial in the U.S., um, as late as the 40s into the 50s, it was second in production to Fuerte, even, for a while. Um, but it uh, never, never held much of the market. Anyway, you can see that it's a green fruit. These are all nibals, and they're all ripe. It stays green. Um, and it's a, it's very round. I mean, some of them are... A little bit oblong. Some of them are extremely round. And um, the the skin stays green even when they're ripe. Unlike so over here we have a lamb, and this is a reed by comparison. So the the skin stays green just like a reed does when it's ripe. Um, and incidentally. The reed is thought to have Nabal as one of its parents. And so you can see a lot of similarities between the two avocados. Shape, size, color. One thing that's unique about Nabal, well, different from, say, reed and a lamb, is that it, it tends to have a lot of scarring. Nabal, it'll even get extremely scarred, like alligator skin on it sometimes. Um, and the skin is uh, very thick. It's, it's hard to tell when they're ripe. So uh, what I tend to try to do is wiggle the stem to see if the stem will pop out and then use a toothpick to make sure it's ripe. Otherwise, man, I've uh, wasted a lot of nabals by cutting them open too late. And uh, I, use, I use a big knife. I can't even use a small knife to cut open a nabal because they're, um, they're just too, uh, the skin is too thick. Here, I'm going to open up this one, this bigger one, if I can get the button out. There we go. You hear that? You hear that shell? So, what do you notice inside? I mean, the seed, <laughs> the seed's big, right? Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny because in the original descriptions, like Papineau's descriptions, it's like the seed is small. Uh, and, um, you know, compared to a lot of other varieties at the time, the seed was not so big. Um, this actually, this particular piece of fruit here, the seed's bigger than average. Usually, Nabal seeds are a little bit smaller than this. But, um, still, uh, compared to today's varieties, that's a big seed. The nice thing about the seed, uh, on the other hand, is that the coat adheres to the seed. It doesn't stick to the flesh. So, there's no, there are no problems there. So that's excellent. Um, but what uh, the other things, the other thing that you might notice when you, when you cut open in a ball is it, it leaves a bit of uh, grit along the peel there when you cut it open. So what I tend to do is just give a little spoon along the side and get that grit off before eating it. Um, actually, Lamb and reed also leave that grit a little bit sometimes, but nibal is a little bit worse. 
What about the color? The color's nice. It's like a, it's a nice yellow, a little bit of green toward the periphery. It's not as bright yellow as reed. It's not as green as lamb, but the color is acceptable. And um, there's never any fiber. I've never found any strings in an A-ball. The, the texture is always smooth, um, buttery, smooth. I, you know, if, if one of Reed's parents is a ball, it makes a lot of sense because the textures are very similar um, in, in terms, I mean, as good as it gets, really. So smooth. Um, spooning some out. It spoons very easily and it comes cleanly out of the skin and the skin leaves no aftertaste. So what you can do with a nibal, which you can do with a reed, but you can do it even better with a nibal, is you can use the shell, the skin, like a bowl. Um, I've often just cut out the flesh, chopped it up, put it back in like guacamole, add some things, cilantro, onion, some tomato, salsa, whatever, and you've got a nice little bowl that you can just uh, use chips to eat out of. Um, the flavor. It's very nice. It's, uh, it's got, it, it's, so, I keep comparing it to reed just because that's the obvious comparison but whereas reed is a milder kind of smoother there's not much nuttiness in reed it's a nice flavor but it's smooth nabal has a little more character in its flavor and um i i don't know exactly how to describe it it doesn't it doesn't uh nutty doesn't quite do it for me I mean, it's got a nuttiness, but it, to me, it's more, it's more of like a smokiness, like a roasty, roasty flavor in the background. Um, it's really nice if you like that kind of flavor. Um, and so that's a difference, um, between say reed and nibal. Lamb, to me, lamb, when lamb is mature, it's got more of a nuttiness. Nibal, not quite as nutty, but more of a Mm, a smooth, smoky, roasty flavor. Rich. Really nice. It gets very oily. It makes an excellent guacamole. It's, uh, it's really smooth, though. Eat it on its own. Very good. So what happened? Why, why isn't it grown, grown commercially anymore? Well, you know, I mean, imagine the seed size is too big for today. The fruit, frankly, is a little bit too big for today. Um, even reed, people don't even like to buy reeds sometimes because they're so big. But in addition, the tree itself um, isn't so productive everywhere. And it can it's known to even be too productive. And the, the tree will decline in a year after it hasn't been productive for a couple years. Um, I, know, I know of a Nabal tree that produces consistently, but um, it seems to be a... Um, a regional or climatic thing where um, that that's not the case everywhere. Anyway, basically, um, in terms of commercial importance, Nabal was not as reliably productive as it needed to be. Reed, on the other hand, far better in terms of production. And so Nabal is a great tree to maybe add to a collection. I've got a Nabal tree but I also have other trees, other varieties. I would never plant Nabal as my only tree. I'd rather have a reed or a hass or even a lamb. So, but anyway, for eating quality, Nabal is excellent.